you know what, every athlete needs to watch video and that should also apply to four-legged athletes. You think Airbud watch wasn't watching film? He was. This is SportsCenter. Hey, I'm Julia Tacheri filling in for Risser. And the madness on the men's side officially arrived yesterday. And it did not disappoint. We had multiple upsets on opening day. But none better than unheralded 14 seed Oakland, upsetting the heavily favored three seed Kentucky. Oakland University, which calls Michigan home, not California, advanced to the second round for the first time in school history, as their only other tourney win came in a preliminary round game back in 2005, and did so in the strength of 32 points from senior Jack Golke, who knocked down a ridiculous 10 triples on 20 attempts. That's just one shy of the tournament record. But Golke and the team's performance didn't seem to surprise them. We're not a Cinderella. And they'll be facing another double-digit seed in the round of 32, as the red-hot 11 seed NC State upset sixth-ranked Texas Tech. After losing the final four games of the regular season, the Wolfpack have now reeled off six consecutive wins. And once again, they leaned on their dominant front court, as DJ Burns Jr. and Ben Middlebrooks combined for 37 points, on nearly 70% shooting from the floor. Now, Jack Armstrong might not have been sold on them yesterday, but the Wolfpack cruised en route to becoming the last of four double-digit teams to pull off an upset yesterday. And all the mayhem led to less than 1% of brackets being left perfect after just one day. But B. John Robinson must have had his crystal ball out when he was making his picks. And he's one of just 0.0038% of the immaculate brackets. And with the women's tourney now also underway, we all know this is an amazing time as a sports fan, especially on TSN. Which is why we have a pair of exciting offers that you can take advantage of right now. For a limited time, three months of TSN, which includes TSN Plus, is available for just $40. And three months of TSN Plus could be yours for just $12. Not only for your March Madness fix, but with the Masters just around the corner, plus PGA Tour Live, F1, and so many other sports kicking into high gear, you don't want to miss out on this offer. <laughs> Tomorrow night in Toronto, we've got an awesome all-Canadian matchup. That'll be fun for so many reasons as the Oilers visit the Leafs. Let's start with a bit of an awards watch. The race for the Art Ross is between three players, Kucherov, McKinnon, and McDavid. Kucherov has 16 points in his last five games and is five up on Nate and 10 up on Connor. But McDavid had a four point night in a win over the Sabres and is on a bit of a tear of his own with 12 points in his last five outings. The other awards we're keeping an eye on are the Rocket and the Heart. The Rocket is pretty much wrapped up as Austin Matthews is miles ahead of anyone else. But the chase for 70 is still on. And if he does manage to get to that mark, the biggest question becomes, will he win the heart? No other Leaf in franchise history has won that award more than one time. And the same is true for the Lightning franchise. But if Kucherov were to win, he would change that. Then there's McKinnon, who would be the third Av to win the award, potentially joining Joe Sackick and Peter Forsberg. <laughs> time now for my favorite segment and yours, Why We Love Sports Today. Why We Love Sports Today. Opening day for everyone except the Dodgers and Padres, who officially opened their season in Korea over the past few days is less than a week away, which means there's still time to work out some of the kinks for both big league teams and, of course, their broadcast crews. I did not notice the number was on that on the, on the, on the stomach side. I, I did that. What do you mean? The number down. I, I yeah. didn't notice. But you didn't know that there was a number there? Yeah. I haven't Stop. noticed all spring. Keith. <laughs> <laughs> Keith. I forget it. <laughs> don't, don't pay attention to me. <laughs> We didn't have a number down there when I played. Yeah, you did. We did? No. Oh, yeah. Really? I know we have a number on our backs. Definitely the number on the back. <laughs> uh. Keith, dude, are you okay? Whatever. It's spring. We're getting the rust off. It's fine. It's all good. Come on. I won the MVP in 79. I can do whatever I want to. <laughs> the Raptors are back in action tonight. Hoping to snap a season worst eight game losing streak. They're coming off an ugly 34 point loss to the Kings on Wednesday. And things aren't getting any easier tonight as they host Shea Gilgis Alexander and the powerhouse Thunder. And while Toronto's collapse down the stretch has been tough to watch for Raps fans, there could be a silver lining because they're now neck and neck with Memphis for the sixth worst record in the association. And their first round pick this year is top six protected. Otherwise it goes to the Spurs. Meanwhile, this game means a ton for OKC. Not only is SGA playing less than an hour away from where he grew up, but his Thunder are trying to hold on to top spot in the West, with the defending champs right on their heels. For more on this matchup, we're bringing in our gambling guru, Wes Chang. What's going on, Wes? Thanks for having me. 
Wes, SGA has been firmly entrenched as the second choice for league MVP behind Nikola Jokic for quite a while now. But the Joker's starting to pull away. Is there anything Shea could do to close the gap in the final 14 games of the season? Unfortunately, I think SG has done all that he can. He's having an MVP caliber season. The problem is, Jokic is as well. I think the only path into the MVP conversation, or at least to be the front runner for it, it has to come down to team success. OKC's either got to win 14 straight games to close the year, go 13 and 1. I think the biggest thing is they can't just be the one seed. They have to have a three, four game gap over Denver. That way, SJ can use team success as a catalyst for why his MVP case is better than Jokic. All right, and before you go, you know we need your best bet for tonight. SG and the Thunder are in town, and I recommend taking the under on the Raptors team total. There is a macro trend in the NBA right now. Scoring is down across the NBA since the All-Star break. It's roughly three points per game. Toronto's offense has looked completely lost with IQ, Barrett, Barnes, and Pirtle all out of the lineup. And then you have to remember, OKC is not just a top five offense. They're a top five defense as well. They need wins. Raptors don't. I think this is a good spot to emotionally hedge against the Raptors. Thanks again, Wes. Enjoy your weekend. Thanks, Julia. You too. And then there were two. The Crave craze was whittled down to just two willing combatants yesterday. As the top seed in The Sopranos took on The Office for all-time TV show supremacy. You made the call. And in a stunning upset, The Office narrowly pulled it off over Tony and his cronies. What the fuck happened to that? It peed it out. It peed it out. It died on the vine. I don't want to hear it. This gives me great hope and pride in the viewers of Digital Sports Center. Nicely done. Nicely done, people. We've done it. This is better than the Dundies. And now that this madness is done, you could get back to the basketball variety. Or maybe it's time to start another Dunder Mifflin rewatch on Crave? I feel very blessed. The third race of this F1 season is less than 36 hours away. As coverage for the Australian Grand Prix begins tomorrow night at 11 Eastern, 8 Pacific on TSN. With more on the Aussie Grand Prix, we're bringing in our F1 analyst, Tim Haraney. How's it going, Tim? Hey, Julia. Thanks very much for having me. Really appreciate it. Now, Max Verstappen has won the first two races of the season, but you have a more intriguing story regarding an incredible recovery from Carlos Symes, who had his appendix removed just two weeks ago. Could you explain how it's even possible for him to be back on the track right now? Yeah, incredible is uh, that's a great word to use. I mean, I can't believe he's actually there. I honestly thought that uh, Ollie Behrman was going to be filling in for him uh, for this weekend, but Ferrari telling us uh, well in advance that he was going to give it a go. And one of the big things for Carlos in this whole process was his recovery time. So that seven days after his surgery was crucial, a lot of bed rest, a lot of really you know, taking it easy. And the thing with that is there is a downside to that, which we'll get into in a little bit. But the thing for Carlos, for him, the determination was, look, I don't have a contract for next year. Lewis Hamilton's coming over and he's taking my spot here at Ferrari. I have to be in this race car and I have to show that I have value so I can get something that's just as good as this Ferrari seat for the future. And so for, for him, that mindset has to be, look, I got to push through this pain, even though I'm not 100% right now. So Carlos taking part in free practice one and free practice two. Uh, yesterday, I was told he has been walking around the paddock quite gingerly. So Julia, he's, he's not at 100% just yet. Okay, so what are your realistic expectations for him this weekend? I mean, that's a great question, Julia. I mean, when I was a professional racing driver, I was training upwards of 30 hours a week to maintain that physical fitness. So I had said, you know, Carlos taking those seven days off to sort of rest and recover, you're starting to detrain at that moment. Your body's starting to lose a lot of that fitness that you've built up. You have to remember that these are athletes. They're training 30 hours a week. They're at the peak cardiovascular fitness that they can reach. They're at the peak strength and endurance that they can withstand as well. And so... For Carlos, he needs to understand if he can push through an entire Grand Prix distance and not have the body start to fatigue because once it starts to fatigue, the mind tends to go with it. You lose a bit of that concentration. And so for Ferrari itself, they look extremely strong this weekend. I think they can actually challenge Max Verstappen for the win here. And I know I can't believe I'm saying that, but 
They actually can. Charles Leclerc, free practice one, free practice two, looking really strong. Race pace looks really strong. Quali pace looks really strong. And if they want to try to put pressure on Red Bull to steal a win, they are going to need Carlos Sainz to help them do that. Well, we're definitely going to be rooting for him. Enjoy the race, Tim. Hey, thanks very much for having me, Julia. Really appreciate it. Have a great weekend. And that's all for today. We'll be right back here on Monday, 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. See you then.